Good evening. I'd like to call to order these, this work session for the Monroe County Public Library Board of Trustees for November 9th. And um, if we can just go around quickly and introduce ourselves, and if you'd like to share something you're reading, please do so. Kathy, we'll start with you. Kathy Loser, and I'm in between books, but I've been reading a lot of new picture books that have been coming into the store, so that's been fun. <laughs> I'm looking for the name of the book <laughs> that, that a person just recommended to me that I'm going to download. Ah, oh, crap, I'm not gonna get it. Uh, anyway, my name is David Ferguson, and I am between books, but I have one teed up very soon. I'm Chris Harrison, and I'm currently listening to the Mysterious Benedict Society. I'm Greer Carson, and I am rereading Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim by David Sedaris, and I don't know why, but it's, it's hitting the spot, yeah. My name is Kari Essary, and I am reading Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. I'm Fred Reisinger, and um, I'm reading a book about uh, NATO and how it appears to be falling apart um, right now. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. The other way around. All right. Well, and the only item on our agenda tonight is to hear about the 2023 health insurance options and a proposal for the health insurance that uh, we might be thinking about going with. So I'll turn things over to Greer to sure. fill us in. Thank you. So as you all know, we've been talking about um, what we might call total rewards in terms of compensation. We're in the middle of a compensation review, which we haven't done for some time. But what we do every single year is evaluate our health insurance options, uh, take a look at the market when we feel it's appropriate, and see if there are better options out there. And this year, uh, we got a lot of feedback from MCPL staff uh, on what they found uh, rewarding about our current uh, health insurance plan and where we might be able to make some improvements. We considered some of the discussions that we had last November about health insurance when we were looking to renew with SIHO. And uh, we took all of that and did some extensive work, got some bids from the marketplace. Thanks to our, our partners at JA Benefits, of course, uh, we were able to come up with some really good options. And tonight, we're going to propose one of those options. I'd like to introduce uh, Becky Throckmorton, our HR assistant manager, who's really run point on this project. And we also have tonight Corey Johnson from JA Benefits, who's here to answer any questions we might have. So I'll turn it over to Becky. All right. Thanks, Greer. Too many papers up here. Um, So I know you guys have heard from me several times over the last several months here. Um, so I wanted to recap some of the things that we have done this year, just in case it's been a while since we've talked about it. Um, there's been a lot going on. Um, so we have worked really diligently this year, as Greer mentioned, to really benchmark our benefits, to look at the total rewards that we have for staff, and to do a full survey um, as part of our compensation um, review that we're working on with NFP. Um, so back in March and April, we did a full analysis of all of our benefits, and we did some pretty extensive benchmarking with the help of JA Benefits. Um, so we looked at regional, local, um, and industry data to see how our insurance benefits matched up with those of other providers. Um, so we looked at um, the premiums that we were receiving um, from the carrier, the way that we split those premiums with our employees and made sure that everything was in line there. Um, to recap, because it's been a while since we had that conversation, um, we discussed that MCPL is covering 100% of the premium for the employee only. Um, this goes above and beyond the benchmark. Um, our employee plus premiums, so employee plus spouse, um, child or children, and family, were well within line with the benchmark data from what we received from the the broker or from the carrier, as well as with what we're splitting with the employee. And the place that we were lagging behind on the benchmark was the HSA contribution. Um, then we gathered staff feedback. Um, so this has been in, this, in the form of surveys, um, both in-house surveys that we have done and surveys that are part of our total rewards salary study with NFP. This data has been very helpful in understanding where our staff needs and concerns are 
and have helped us to understand where we're meeting the mark and places that we can make changes to improve and meet those staff needs. Um, specifically, this is with carrier, plan structure, and cost. Then, um, last month we went to the market. Um, so JA Benefits helped us come up with uh, four bids that came in from different carriers for our 2023 benefits. We looked at the strategy that we want for 2023 and beyond when we were looking at these carriers. And so we received four bids um, that we really carefully considered and evaluated. These came from SciHo, IU Health, Anthem, and UHC. Um, the first page in the board packet has a more thorough write-up of each of those options. Um, as we thoroughly reviewed these, we weighed the plan design, the networks, tools, and accessibility for our staff, in addition to the premiums themselves. Um, UHC had a pretty significant plan design change um, that would have changed the benefit themselves for staff. IU Health had a significant network um, change, so they had a more narrow network than what we were on previously, and we felt that that would disrupt the employee um, ability to get care and to continue to get care where they're getting it now. SciHo came back with a premium increase, um, and they were the same carrier, and so they weren't able to address some of the concerns that we uncovered in the staff surveys and feedback and some of those um, pieces that we did earlier in the year. That brings us to Anthem. Um, so Anthem is the option that we are um, presenting tonight. Anthem came in initially with a 0.4% decrease in premium over our current year. Um, JA Benefits was able to help us decrease that down to an 8.8% decrease over our current year premium. In addition to the decreased total premium cost, um, we're able to continue to offer the $5, or $500 deductible PPO plan, it's a $3,000 HSA high deductible health plan, and a $5,000 high deductible health plan. So the plan structure stays the same. The network is actually a little bit broader than what we had on SciHo, which allows our staff to keep the same providers that they were seeing and keep the same level of care without disruption. And then additionally, Anthem is a national provider and they're able to offer some tools for our staff to be more self-service. So our staff will be able to view um, providers in the area. There's online tools where they can see the cost ahead of time um, before they get care and can really take more ownership in their health insurance and their health care. Um, and then additionally, they have um, some rewards programs that they offer, um, and this includes um, access to robust one-on-one robust -on -one coaching and telephonic support from registered nurses for um, chronic condition care and well-being. Um, and so you'll see um, in page three of the board packet the proposed um, rate sheet that we have. So this is kind of the final step in this. Gary and I worked together um, to come up, he's not able to be here tonight, um, but Gary and I worked together to come up with this um, plan structure. Um, so this is the rate for the employer and employee share. And I'll go ahead and flip to it here. So you'll see along the top of the spreadsheet here, the three plans. So we're able to still offer that $500 PPO plan, a $3,000 high deductible health plan, and a $5,000 high deductible health plan. Along the side are the tiers of coverage that are available for employees. So we have employee only, employee plus spouse, plus child or children, and family. The Total premium is what Anthem is providing, or is what Anthem provides to us as the charge. The library share is what we're proposing that the library cover as far as the cost, and the employee share is the portion that the employee would be responsible for. Um, you'll see on the employee only, the library continues to cover 100% of the premium for all three of the plans, which is what we have offered in the past. On the employee plus, so spouse, child, or children, and family, we've split it so that the employer covers 80% of the cost and the employee covers 20%.
which is slightly more generous on the employer piece than we've done in the past, but very much in line with benchmarking. The other piece that you'll see in here is the HSA contribution. So Gary and I took the um, premium that the library is gonna cover on the PPO plan as the benchmark for what we're gonna be spending money on across the other plans. And the HSA contribution is the difference between the library share of the premium and for the high deductible health plan and the library share on the PPO plan. And so across the board, no matter what plan an employee selects, it costs the library the same amount of money. And so it's more equitable across the board with regards to the cost of the benefit. And it gives our employees the option to pick which plan makes the most sense for them. So I'll go ahead and open it up. For uh, I mean, this is great. If I was working here and buying and picking my insurance, this would be a lot of information that would be helpful. This really isn't very helpful as a board member. Like, what's our total? Like, where's the total that we're gonna pay for insurance? Shouldn't we be looking at that? Like, if we're talking about what's the difference between Anthem and somebody else? Like, unless I'm missing it, we don't have it. Not, a, not on this packet. So, like, I get it. We pay all the insurance for the employee. That's awesome. No negatives. We pay 80% of the spouse and children. That's awesome. I mean, it's a wonderful that we can do that. And that's great. And so I get it that, and this is great. And I'm happy to know the effort that people went through to make sure the employees would get the best. That's great. But what's it gonna cost us like last year compared to this year? I mean, I'm just trying to think of a board level decision. Like I think management has done a wonderful job going through and finding the best thing for the employee. That's great. I can tell from some of the text that it looks like your proposal or your choice, your selection, your recommendation of Anthem is because good pricing, good network, good company, great. But what is the net? What's the bottom line? What's that? the bottom line to the board? Yeah. It's like I could look at this and go, hey, that's great. All right, let's do it. But then I'm kind of catching myself going, hmm? what, what is the amount? Okay. Is it the same? I mean, I just, as a board member, I want to kind of look at the, the budget. I'm, I'm, from the text, I can kind of tell, although I get a little lost in the acronym, SIHO, it must be an insurance company, it's Southern Indiana Health something, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm guessing that UHC is United Health, United Healthcare, one of the biggest healthcare companies in America, but I don't know if I've ever seen it referred to as UHC, at least I'm 65, it's November. At my house, we're getting a lot of mail about Medicare, and I'm getting a lot from United Healthcare, and they don't say UHC. But I know who we're talking about. So you know, and, and anyway, so I would like to see, you know, before we vote on something, sure. what is the, and it's probably will be in our packet yeah. for next week, that we would see something from the board level. Okay. I mean, I can, I can tell the effort's been put forth here and it looks like a good effort, but. But let's look at the math on that. Yeah, and I, and I look at it and go, yeah. What, what could the employee complain about? Yeah. You're paying all the premiums for the employee. You're paying 80% for a spouse and children. You're, and now you're going, well, we weren't quite caught up on the HSA. So in looking at it, it looks like we take what we would have paid. We pay the premium for the HSA. And then we give a little extra so that it's the same to us cost-wise as it would be anyway. So it's just the employee gets to use the money in a little different way. And HSAs are awesome if you're you know, really healthy and you're not using sure. it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're, you're saving up money. So I don't know, that's, healthcare's on my mind a lot. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> like a, a sheet to show us that this was the overall cost. Mm -hmm. 
in the budget for paying this benefit last year right. and this year. So yeah. I think that and would what satisfy. The three other bids were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we could go. Oh yeah, look, this is this is the. I, and I see the math was done, and we're kind of getting it. SIHO started out with an 18% rate increase and came down to 15%. But what, what was that number? You know, those numbers up on a sheet would seem like what we as a board would would want to see. Okay. I, and I appreciate this. I mean, it's not that I don't want to see it. I do yeah, want to no, see I it. Yeah. But and it does show a lot of great thought, and I think it's been you know it's great for employees and. Given the way healthcare has gone, I think we're this is wonderful. We can do this. Well, and I also think we need to to consider as we get to the end of the year and we start looking at um, pay increase, possible pay increases for next year. How does this fit in? I mean, if we're paying, if we are picking up more in the health insurance, how is that going to overall impact then the amount we can give to in pay raises and things like that? And which one does the employees want to see? Do they want to see more in their pocket? Or do they want to see more picked up for health insurance? So those are all things that you know we need to consider. And sure. again, I agree with David. There's a lot of great things going on here, but I think just looking at it, how this ov Im overall impacts the budget is really an important decision, okay. or an important piece that the board needs to look at. We'll we'll put that together pretty clearly in the packet going out this week for next week's meeting. So, and I'm a yeah. little confused when we say we benchmarked it. I don't know what that means. Are you saying you compared our benefits to? City, county, university, I don't know who else there'd be, you know, governmental organizations or county funded mm -hmm. organizations, like I would think Monroe County employees. How do we, would that be a benchmark? So when we benchmarked everything back in April, we used three data points. So we used the national averages, industry average, so for this type of, you know, county libraries. Count I don't think it's that granular, but there is a broad set of employers, both uh, nationally and then regionally and then uh, by industry in general. So what is by industry? Like service industry? So it would be government mm -hmm. generally. Government industry. Yeah, a broad SIC category. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Government, but I mean, we're county government. We're not federal government. Wouldn't seem to be a fair comparison. I guess the other number I'd like to see is um, the percentage of increase from last year to this year or decrease. Yeah. I can't remember what. Yeah, I used to keep a chart of that because it was going up so <laughs> yeah. fast every right. year. And I was looking right. at the chart going, well, if this keeps up in, you know, 10 years, mm -hmm. we can't buy any books because it's all. So I'm a little bit shocked that we're still well, buying books. We still have nearly a million dollars in our <laughs> materials budget that we're paying 100 percent of the employees, 80 percent of the spouse and children. Like, geez, you guys have done a great <laughs> job, you know. Keep, I guess, but it would be nice to see those numbers over a longer period of time so we could see, hey, good job. Sure. I mean, that would be, to me, that would be intriguing. That would be, I don't know, would help us a little bit. But yeah, benchmarking confused me a little bit because I didn't know who we were benchmarking against. Well, um, that first paragraph where you talk about the 18% increase and the 15, that would be addressing Kari's question, correct? So the um, SIHO, when they bid, I guess I can let you answer the question yeah, on how the way. bid worked. Yeah, so SIHO came, is essentially the incumbent, the, the partner you were working with before, and that was at 18%. They did reduce it to 15%. So essentially on total premium, realizing there's different employer level budgets that you're going to share as you go forward to next week, you were spending $738,000 in the current year projected based on current enrollment. That can shift if you add an employee or an employee changes tiers, of course. Um, SIHO's final proposal was 849 or about $110,000 a year more. And Anthem uh, final proposal was about $65,000 less than current. So about $175,000 swing from incumbent final to Anthem final. So that's like a 17% of our budget. It's, of it's our a 15% to an 8% negative swing, so it's a pretty significant portion. And even over last year, you have more premium, which you guys are redirecting based on your studies with NFP and others to figure out how to make sure you're competitive in the market, essentially. So if I'm getting this correctly, um, the Anthem bid is, you said, 8% lower than the 738,000? Than the current rates, yes. OK, well, that's. So it's six. Lovely. Lead with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Let's, as I'm you can tell, here. the team is focused very much on employees because there's recruiting and retention. I can see that. Of course, of course, but I appreciate your questions. They're good ones. Yeah. So that's great. Now we're taking some of the savings and we're manipulating around where we spend the, the premium to make sure the employee gets. Well, we'll, we'll include in the packet for next week sort of that overall budget impact. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, the second part, this part is awesome. Yeah. But it, I just, as I read through it, I was like, well, you know, it's just I get some percentages. This is less. This is more. But your numbers were much starker. They were, it was nice, you know, to hear that. That sounds like we're doing the fiscally responsible thing, and that's always good, too. Just out of curiosity, are we um, self-insured here, or are we part of a larger? Yeah, you're fully insured. Um, so you're part of the larger book of business that okay. a carrier would have. Um, okay. Currently, SIHO, and if you proceed with Anthem, it would be with Anthem's uh, fully insured book of, book of business in okay. Indiana. And also, just out of curiosity, how many, um, about how many employees or what percentage of our employees use the insurance or participate in the insurance or offer the insurance compared to, I mean, because I assume we have, like, the, the um, materials handlers, the ones that shopping books, they're, they're not right. getting insurance benefits. Becky, so I'm just curious. Can you speak to the percentage of employees we have on the plan right now? Yeah, I'm pulling <laughs> it up right now. I want to, I don't want to give you the wrong number. And I have it, but I'm adding, they're on separate columns on a PDF, okay. so I'm <laughs> doing math <laughs> while Becky looks for her math as well. And I can give it to you by plan design as well. So we have um, currently enrolled and obviously that changes month to month as well. We have 34 enrolled in the PPO plan, the, the most um, expensive plan, the best plan, um, depending on your needs. We have 25 enrolled in that middle plan or the $3,000 plan going forward and 23 enrolled in the highest deductible plan. Okay, thank and then you. Adding those three together, what percentage is that of our employees? Of our total employees yeah. or our full-time? Yeah. I mean, I would have guessed it'd be 100% because we're paying 100% of their premium. Qualified for benefits, I wouldn't say what the whole number of employees, right? Yeah, I've got the <laughs> number of full-time employees in here. So that'll be the 30-hour full-time eligible mm -hmm. employees right. that is the most relevant yeah. yeah. number. No. Yeah. yeah, and usually it's a, sp a choice of a spouse's plan or maybe alternatives where people are not picking up your plan, but and I would so agree. we have the rule that says if you're if you can, do we have that rule that if you can yeah. be insured under somebody else's that you can't be insured on we, ours, or if your spouse can be insured on do. somebody else's? No, we don't have that rule. We don't have that. No. So someone that isn't on your plan is picking their spouse's plan for a number of reasons, potentially, or they have other alternative coverage. So sometimes they are over 65 and they have Medicare, for right. example, in certain cases. Um, Becky might have the total. Yeah, we have 83 total that are full-time eligible for health insurance. And the total number who have our insurance? 82. 82. 82. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Very close to 100%. Yeah. Yes. Well, I would think it would okay. be. But I was trying to think how you would turn down the. But are really? there people that. This is very good. Like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess, it, I guess it is. I don't know. That's, that's good. That's good. We want them to take it. Well, that, that's the benchmarking yeah. that would be very interesting well, to hear to yeah. go, oh, that's awesome. We're doing better. And that would be great. Yeah. You know, if you benchmark against some unknown group, it's like. But they also, you have to be careful there because when you look at other groups, they do not. It, this is the first I've seen in this, or, well, it's been here. But when you break it down, many places only say you get insurance, family or single. There's no de delineation between spouse and family or worker children and worker. So that makes it very expensive. Yeah, when yes. you just have two groups, and that's what MCCSE has, has, two groups. All right. All right. So somebody who is single is paying the same amount that somebody has 12 kids. Well, we're beating that, right, because we're paying all the premium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Except it's only it Seems fairer, though. Mm -hmm. Spouse, <laughs> depending. Yeah, so anybody who's covering a spouse, mm -hmm. a child, or a family is paying a portion of that right. premium. Right. Well, and that's what was interesting. I was like, okay, so the, the total premium, and then I'm like, wait a minute, we're paying all that, so. We pay all of the premium for the employee only, only. but the right. employee plus, we're splitting it 80-20. Right, but it, yeah. it, it would be more interest 
I mean, to a board member with, with the total. I mean, this is, this is interesting, but it, it used to be <coughs> more interesting for a board member because you'd be worried like, oh my gosh, look at the premium. How is the employee going to afford that? Mm -hmm. You know, so and we would look at their share and oh my gosh, and how are they going to pay that? But when you're paying all of it, it's a lot easier. Well, the employee's not paying anything, so they're going to be able to afford that. So then now we're focusing just on dependent cost and the cost with what the employee pays. <coughs> what is HDHP? High deductible? High deductible health plan. Health plan. Mm -hmm. All right. I had one of those for 20 years. I think I know what it was. <laughs> all these acronyms. Yeah, acronyms. I hate acronyms. I, they're all right if we define them at least once, That's but I didn't point. see that defined yeah. anywhere. Put it in the italics. And they say, oh, yeah, I got it. And then I see in here the, um, the dental and the vision. Are there any other um, things that they can buy? If they want to, I'm trying to think what else would there be? Like life insurance? I don't know. It's yes. the duck. The duck always wants to sell you cancer insurance and some <laughs> other stuff. Right. But. Yeah, so we offer um, health, and den or health, dental, vision, um, long term disability is okay. paid by the employer. Okay. There's a life insurance policy that's paid by the employer. Okay. Short term disability is voluntary. Um, there's a voluntary life and ADD that employees can purchase for themselves or spouse or child or children that's 100 percent the cost is paid by the employee okay um we also offer the like all state products which is ever or um critical illness cancer and accident insurance those premiums are paid 100 percent by the employee and then we also have the everside clinic um, which is another piece that historically has been included in our health insurance um, JA was able to do a really good job at getting us um, a revised option with Everside where we can offer that to only the employees who want to enroll in it. Previously, it was tied to our health insurance, and so anyone who enrolled in health insurance was automatically enrolled in the clinic, and we had to do that to hit a minimum number. But this year, we're able to offer the clinic to just the people who want to enroll, and from the information that we have, I think it'll be fewer people enrolled, which should be a lower cost to the library. So how much will the um, person pay for the clinic and how much will we pay for the clinic? So the clinic, what we're proposing is that the clinic is paid 100% by the library. Um, okay. We were paying 100% of it for 90% of our staff anyways when it was part of our health insurance because we paid for the employee only. And okay. so we only had 11 staff who had elected the clinic without having the employer pay for it. And so if we're able to open it up and just say whoever actually wants it can enroll, we have data that says it should be fewer people. So it should actually be a lower cost to the library and no cost to the employee. Okay. And, and yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's already available to everybody. So all okay. the way down to our material handlers. And then we pay that fee and it would be good to know how much that fee is too. It's uh I can give you the exact number, but it's okay. approximately $5,000 a month. Um, it's $47 per employee per month. Okay, so about, okay. And that's only for full-time employees, is that correct? Or No, that's for all employees. So, so okay, okay. Thanks. So I have a question on the dental insurance. Yeah. It, it says dental contributions. I'm trying to figure out, what's the annual maximum, $1,250 annual maximum? Um, so we don't have any changes to our dental or vision, um, but I did include those in here. I mean, see the premiums, but I was just kind of wondering about the benefits too. And then I didn't understand the, is the annual maximum, what is that? Deductible is $25 in network. Yeah, I can answer that. So the annual max is essentially based on the benefits that pay, which again, aren't changing from year to year for the members is the maximum amount that that policy will pay out. Most employers- That's what I was afraid of. Yep. So, so the total benefits you can get are $1,250. Correct. And so, but per, wait. Per member. Per, me per member, yep. per household member. Correct. Okay, that's better. Yeah, well, I was just looking at so some of these families might be paying $500, yeah. and if they're only getting 1,210 and 1,250 in benefits, that's not a very good deal. It's not really insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Is this 
this this is separate from Anthem. It's it's like a it's market. It's on the market market insurance basically. It's because offered. I do know a lot of dentists now are not accepting marketplace premium insurance. Yeah, so this is a separate dental policy through HRI or Paramount Dental, and that is actually a dental um, insurer that we've moved to a couple of, many, uh, maybe three or four years ago. Do you know what percentage of the dentists in Bloomington will accept that insurance? Because there's a lot that do not. There's a lot that do not, and there are more and more that don't want right. to accept insurance. Right. And so uh, often there is an out-of-network benefit where it will still pay. Um, you might be balance billed. And, and typically, we have had a lot of, of luck with HRI in general being more accepted by dentists. It was a network that was started by dentists. It's now mm -hmm. been sold a couple of times since, but it is a dentist-friendly network. Mm -hmm. So we've had actually pretty good luck with that. Um, there's pros and cons to all networks, mm -hmm. um, including for dental networks, but I think it's been a fairly uh, steady resource for members, and we've had pretty good luck with access to care. Um, that's been a concern on medical and dental, but mostly medical in the South Central region for Indiana. Good questions, thank you. Anything on that? Yeah. And, and the short-term disability, do we have a, a short-term, dis we don't have a short-term disability like where employees contribute days and let other employees use them. We don't have that sick kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, like a sick bank. So we have sick, employees earn sick time. So anybody who works more than 20, hour, 20 hours a week or more earns sick time. And so they're able to use that. The short-term disability benefit is separate. And that's a benefit that employees pay a portion of the premium for. Um, and, and that, that would pay them at, over and above like say they had 30 days built up in sick days, they could take those and then they could make their short-term disability claim? So short-term disability would pay out up to, it pays out 60% of your pay for up to 12 weeks total. There's a waiting period, so I think it's um, you know, maybe 10 weeks of paid benefit, but it pays out once you've used up your paid time off, it pays there's out to cover that. There's a waiting period until it can kick in. Yes, there's a two week waiting period. Two weeks. Yes. On that, so you would use your paid so time off. people to keep at least 10 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which would cover that waiting period, and then if you're needing short-term disability, that benefit. But it's is only 60 percent of short-term. It's 60 percent of your pay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. That's all, that's all my questions. Oh, that's good. <laughs> These are great questions. Fascinating area. We all live in fear of some changes to our health insurance. <laughs> yeah. But it's great to turn 65. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it's really awesome. You yeah. all need it. <laughs> yeah. Medicare for all. I've been there a while. <laughs> <laughs> You've been quiet about it, Fred. <laughs> I just, as I think I may have told you, uh, returned from Finland where you don't have to worry about health insurance. Mm -hmm. It is covered by the state. For kids born, for people living mm -hmm. old, it's there. And you never have to pay a dime for a kid to go to school. It's yeah. covered completely all the way from kindergarten through college. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Pay about 40% of your total income goes to the, the, the government, which mm -hmm. pays all that. There's those people over there are just happier than heck. It's interesting to um, to see. Wait, it. I thought that's where they got this the, the seasonal affective disorder because it's dark <laughs> half the year. <laughs> I know it was very nice when we were there <laughs> on a IU boat. Well, we were yeah got off the boat. Okay. Do we have any more comments or questions? All right, well, thank you both very much for your yes. time and for all very the information good. you provided us tonight. We appreciate that. Okay. Okay, we've come to the portion of the meeting for public comment. Do we have any members of the public that would like to come forward and address the board? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 
The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.